ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my review of Overwatch. And you're probably wondering, Derek, you don't do reviews. Why are you doing a review? You said you never want to do reviews. Well, I figured since I'm going to try doing, you know, impressions, I might as well give my total thoughts on the game. Now, I said I was going to do this with quick plays. But quick plays are really confusing because... There's not much to differentiate that from a Let's Play. So, let's be honest. When you hop on some website, a YouTube video or something, and you see review, then you see quick play, you're probably going to think, well, that guy's just going to play a game for 15 minutes and chuckle. And then when they see the review, they're going to be like, oh, this guy's going to talk about what he thinks about the games. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to ditch the quick play thing, and we're going to go ahead and just... Continue with Let's Plays. Let's Plays will be, you know, just like the streaming format that I'm doing. I'm posting a whole lot more Twitch uh, videos where me and my friends are playing different games. But those are streams. But they'll also be Let's Plays. So let's go ahead and get to it. We're going to go ahead and talk about Overwatch. Overwatch just released this month. Well, May. And I think it was on the 20, 24th, 26th. But... I played the beta originally on the Xbox One, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And this game was not on my radar. Ever since they announced it, I didn't care about that. I didn't care about Battleborn. You know, I I just didn't really care about it because I'm not really, really big into multiplayer shooters, and I used to. And, you know, this game has made me want to go back to that. Now, it's very reminiscent of things like Team Fortress 2, a uh, little little MOBA is inspired, not much, but it's it's team based, quite team based, and each character has their own skills and abilities that affect the outcome of how a match will proceed, and we'll talk about that here in a few. Now, like I said before, I played this game originally on the Xbox One, and for the most part, it ran just fine. Um, the community's there. Um, you still had a lot of people playing around, like it's Call of Duty. But, you know, that's that's console games for you. People like to do that. They Any multiplayer game that comes out, automatically the first thing they're going to do is try to get, you know, their kill ratio up and be like, oh, I'm an MLG Pro, no scope, blah, blah, blah. Well, this game's not like that. Um, and actually, it shouldn't be played like that. And <laughs> from playing it on the PC for the last couple days... I picked up the Origins Edition, which if you're going to buy the game, I highly recommend you get the Origins Edition, just due to the fact that you get a bunch of cool things. And yeah, it's $20 more, but these things are actually worth it. Uh, now, the thing, like I said, the Origins Edition, I bought it physically um, at GameStop, which I was going to buy it digitally, but uh, in the case itself, if you buy the game, uh, it comes with a few things. A, it comes with the Widowmaker, uh, Noir skin for the character Widowmaker. Uh, and you also get uh, a hero for Heroes of Storm, a pack of cards for Hearthstone, some wings for um, <laughs> Diablo 3. I think they're called Mercy Wings or something. Uh, you get a guest pass for World of Warcraft, a guest pass for StarCraft 2. Uh, and you also get a pet for World of Warcraft. I think it's a Winston pet. And a few other things. It's really, it's really worth it. Um, you get all kinds of extra skins and stuff as well for Overwatch itself. Uh, and another thing is cool too, Hearthstone. You get uh, your the back of your cards. Not only you get a pack of cards to you know open up, but you also get on the back of them they look like Overwatch symbols. But that's cool. That's cool. So if you're going to look into that, you may want to look into the Origins Edition. Now I don't know if these things are available with the digital. Or, um, version of it but it's worth checking out uh but then you can also buy the blizzard exclusive on battle nets it's 40 bucks and it's just a base game but either way it's totally worth buying i i i highly recommend this title and we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about it now <clears throat> the first thing you're going to notice when you start the game you have tons of characters tons of characters to choose from and you know you're probably going to be a little bit overwhelmed now, the best way to play this game 
and I'm going to go ahead, I can't emphasize this enough, is experiment. Experiment with the characters. You do not want to stay with the same character. Um, yeah, people like to have their go-to characters, and that's not a bad thing. That's not, I'm switching between Genji, Hanzo, Reinhardt, uh, Tra Tracer, and I uh, see, I think May right now. No, that doesn't mean I'm not fooling around with other characters, but each character has their abilities, and they all play really, really differently. Uh, and you'll notice that right away. The game is so varied for the most part, like, you will never play a match and it's going to feel the same because, you know, you every character has their own abilities, and like I said, the gameplay is different for each one. And uh, the really cool thing, too, is the ultimates, which I really, really like, and they can turn the tide of pretty much any situation, depending on what it is. Um, like, for instance, Hanzo has a ultimate is where he'll fire this arrow and he'll have this big giant dragon uh, pretty much uh, clear the room if there's a lot there. Um, let's see. Genji. Genji. Genji's got a cool one, too, where he's got his sword out and does extra damage, is extra fast. And Genji can also have some other cool things to do. He can pretty much block any projectile that comes at him. Uh, he's really quick, and he got some awesome abilities. He's really good for close range. I think I kind of works for um, a little bit for a little further range, but not much. But each, like I said, each character has different abilities. Now, I like I said, I've been playing this for a couple of days now, and you know, I'm still experimenting with more characters. So maybe later on, here in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, I may talk a little about this a little more. Now, you're probably thinking already, right, well, you got all these characters, and there's 24 characters, I believe, and but you only got 12 maps. Well, that's a problem, right? And, uh, you're asking $60 for a multiplayer-only shooter. Does that enough content? Well, yes and no, yes and no. It just really depends. Now, Star Wars Battlefront released um, with far less content, um, it had a lot more game types and um, game variants, but the content was really, really low. Titanfall was the same way, but after a while, they just started releasing all the multiplayer maps for free. Um, it just really depends, like, how much you enjoy team-based shooters and what you expect from Blizzard. Now, Blizzard, they have a track record of supporting their games for quite a long time and that's the case with this so every new character that comes out and also maps will be free so that means you know once you buy the game that's it now you can buy things with uh, your money like the loot crates the loot boxes and those things have skins and stuff but you also earn these on a regular basis it doesn't feel like they're trying to nickel and dime you for this because you can earn them quite literally every time you level up or every time you do some type of uh, challenge or something you can actually earn these and you open them up they have the different skins voice dialogue options skins and whatnot now that's really good there it's really good there because usually i really frown with microtransactions and they do not affect any of the gameplay whatsoever it's all surely merely cosmetic and I like that. I like that a lot about it because it gives more options. And if you want to make your characters look a little bit different and you want to put different uh, skins out, that's cool too. Now, also, also, like I said before, this is a team-based shooter. So you can't play it like Call of Duty or, you know, you, maybe like Battlefield, kind of. You know, they have their different classes and stuff, but everybody has their own job. So... You know, if you're on defense or, you know, trying to escort the uh, the truck or whatever it's called to its destination, you're going to want to play things a little differently. Maybe with a tank, somebody with the turrets, um, you know, and so on and so on. And the game gets really, really good whenever everybody is playing their parts and not going off on their own, playing Rambo and you know not doing their job and that's the best thing about it. If you're going to play the game the best thing to do is probably get a few of your friends together but if you're playing you know maybe a matchmaking session you're probably not going to get that and 
from the matches I've played, there's not very many people that's using their mics. So, and that's kind of bad. Um, so there's not much constant, not much of communication there, which, you know, I kind of expect that there's a lot of people that don't like to hear a bunch of people bitching and saying how much, you know, they fucked each other's moms or yelling random racial slurs. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm guilty of muting players. I usually don't talk to people whenever I'm online because I can't stand it. And, you know, but I think this is one of those games that can really, really, really help with that. Um, but, like I said, there are some cases that I've been into a match and everybody was doing their job just fine. Now, when we're going to talk about a technical standpoint of this game, the game runs really, really great. There's several options um, for you uh, if you're running it on PC. Uh, it's highly, really, really well optimized. So you could probably run this on a lot of older cards. I'm running two 7870s at the moment, and uh, I'm playing everything on Ultra right now, and I'm running well above 60 frames per second, so with very little drops below 60. It's very rare, very rare. But if you go up a little bit on Epic, you know, that's a little worse. I think I get around 40-some, but not too terrible. But the game does look great, um, very cartoony, I love the art style. Um, but maybe later on once I upgrade, my upgrade option is most likely going to be the 1080 GTX. It's like, oh my god, I can't wait to play with that. I just dream about it every day. It's so beautiful. It's like porn. Okay, it, was, it just got awkward there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Anyways, 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 the game is really well optimized. Really like it. Um, you should not have any problems with the game, and you can set the settings for pretty much the most part where you can run it just fine. And like I said, it's it's a Blizzard game, so they're going to try to get as many people as to play it as possible. You know, World of Warcraft, Starcraft 2, Diablo 3, Hearthstone. So they're going to optimize this to where they can get as many players as possible because this game is their first IP in 17 years. And they're hoping really big things come out of it. Now, we've already seen games like Battleborn that just came out recently. And they are... <laughs> Battleborn has a bad case. It's getting a bad rap, which I played the beta for. I didn't care for it. I'm sorry. I wanted to like Battleborn, but I couldn't. I just could not get into it at all. I don't know why it just didn't do anything for me. And a lot of people, like, whenever people say see Battleborn and Overwatch, they kind of think it's the same game. Um, and you, I've seen this a lot, a lot of forums, a lot of people talking about it, um, especially if you go to GameStop or any place that sells video games. Um, it gets a lot of comparisons to it. And the make things worse when the game when Overwatch came out, Battleborn knocked itself down to like 40 bucks instantly because I'm pretty sure the game was selling terrible at that point. And once Overwatch came out, I'm pretty sure the whatever player base was on Battleborn dwindled quite a bit. Um, now, that's like I said, it's not to say that Battleborn was completely bad. I just don't like MOBAs. Now, there are some MOBA influences with Overwatch, but it's not overbearing. It doesn't feel like a MOBA, but you can kind of see how it works. Like, you know, all the characters have different things, different powers and all this stuff, and they're all different. They got all kinds of cool stuff, and the progression is kind of like a MOBA, but it's not a MOBA at all. It's just a team-based first-person shooter, very similar to Team Fortress 2. And I already said that before, and I'll stay with that. It is very similar to Team Fortress 2. And that's great. That's great because, like I said, Team Fortress is true. It's great. It's still playing and still being supported today. Now, as far as, um, like I said, the characters. The characters, they all play different. They all have different abilities. And they're very well worth experimenting with. So, like I said, if you're going to play the game, pro tip is do not stick with the same character. Just check everybody out. And they also have training tutorials you can check out as well. I mean, you can do face off against some bots and that way you can kind of you know f figure out what works for you because like i said every situation is different and you can switch out on the fly 
Now, also, I already did mention this before, the loot boxes. Now, the loot boxes, you know, like I said, every time you level up or complete a challenge, you receive one of these, kind of similar to how Hearthstone does uh, packs. You can win packs. And, like I said, uh, some of the options, whenever you open one of these boxes, they do come pretty fairly quick. You don't feel like you have to buy these things. But that's there. You can spend, like, 20 bucks for... You know, I don't know how many boxes, but you can buy, you know, Overwatch coins and you can buy from the shop. You can buy skins and whatnot. If that's something you want to do, like I said, I do frown upon that. But it's not, like I said, it does not distract from the game whatsoever. Some people may feel like, man, I have to buy that skin. I have to buy it. And that's okay. And that's okay. We're at the point in the gaming industry where... That shit's just not going away. It's not going away. Going to go away. You know, microtransactions is just—it's here to stay. It's it's just, it's just fucking here. And there's not much we can really do about it except for thinking we went for a wallet, but we don't really do that either. Now, here's a verdict on Overwatch. Should you buy Overwatch? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, whatever system you are playing on, if you're playing on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, totally worth it. Totally worth the money. Uh, now, the crazy thing is, on consoles, you cannot get the basic edition, which is 40 bucks. That's kind of a bummer, but there's still the Origins edition, but I don't think it comes with all the other stuff that the PC version has, obviously. Um, like I said, it's definitely worth it. Um, you'll get your money's worth out of the game, plus all the years it's going to be so support, supported with the free maps and everything. Now, if I say there's one problem with the game, it's the lack of single player. I love a single player campaign. I love single player campaigns in my first person shooters. You know, the only reason I buy a Call of Duty game is for the single player. The only reason I'm buying Infinite Warfare is for the single player and the Call of Duty 4 remaster which damn it infinity damn it damn it activision <sighs> but yeah I, I i would love to see a whole single player campaign with all these characters now they're releasing cinematics that kind of flesh out the story a little bit with each character kind of similar to what they did on t fortress 2 with all the um <laughs> all the character trailers which are really hilarious and you know, Blizzard has a really good job. They do really well for cinematics, so uh, there's no skimping out there. Now, if you want to check out some more of the gameplay, I got a lot of footage just playing in the background. Um, some of the stuff I did, I think I did really good in these matches. And I, like I said, I don't play very many uh, shooters on PC, and that's because, you know, whenever... I was, I've been a console player for many years, but playing this on PC is the perfect, it's the best version to buy, hands down. Uh, it's going to, if you have the PC, a chance, it can run it, just get it on PC. And like I said, there's more games I'm going to be playing on PC from here on out, which I've been playing on PC for about three years anyways. But as it goes for a review for the very first review of a game. I'm going to go ahead and say this game gets a 4 out of 5. And I hate giving scores, but it's not perfect. But it's awesome. It's probably one of these games I want to be playing for years to come. But guys, thank you so much for checking us out. Be sure to hit a like and subscribe. And I love you guys so much. And thank you for the support.